on April 20, 1987, Microsoft PowerPoint, created by Robert Gaskins and Dennis Austin, was released. It offers users many ways to display information, from simple presentations to complex multimedia presentations. It is a presentation program which can be used in both synchronous and asynchronous environment. It has diverse features which allows you to create presentations from scratch or a template, add text, 2D and 3D images, art and videos. Select a professional design with PowerPoint Designer. Add transitions, animations, and cinematic motion. Save to OneDrive to get to your presentation from your computer, tablet, or phone. Share your work and work with others wherever they are. It has great functionality. PowerPoint can be used to deliver a presentation in a number of ways as a computer slideshow projected to a live audience by a speaker, displayed on the screen of the presentation computer or tablet for a very small group, printed for distribution as paper documents in several formats, distributed as files for private viewing, even on computers without PowerPoint, packaged for distribution on CD or a network, including linked and embedded data, Transmitted as a live broadcast presentation over the web. Embedded in a web page or blog. Shared on social networks such as Facebook or Twitter. Set up as a self-running unattended display. Recorded as video or audio to be distributed as for any other video. There are key points to note when using Microsoft PowerPoint to increase learner achievement. Visual impact. Making your presentation more interesting through the use of multimedia can help to improve the audience's focus. PowerPoint allows you to use images, audio, and video to have a greater visual impact. These visual and audio cues may also help a presenter be more improvisational and interactive with the audience. However, Try not to overly rely on these sources as your message might get lost in the clutter. Collaboration. PowerPoint allows you to work with others in a collaborative manner. Multiple people can collaborate on and contribute to a presentation. By going to the review tab at the top of the program and clicking on the new comment button, you can leave notes and reposition them on the screen for other team members to view. Comments can be an especially beneficial tool for clarification. Additionally, clicking the Compare button allows you to combine the shared presentations of others or any other presentation with the present one. Content Sharing Share your PowerPoint presentation with the world. Did someone miss your presentation? Have them view it online at a time that is convenient for them. You can upload your presentation to websites such as YouTube with everything featured in your work, including all the slides, commentary, and transition. All you have to do is go to File, Save and Send, and create a video. The file will be saved in WMV format, which is capable of playback on window media player and can be uploaded to most video sites. Flexibility. PowerPoint can be used in a number of different effective ways to communicate with your audience. Slides are completely customized to fit your needs. Depending on your approach, you may want to have a presentation that is text heavy, image heavy, or some combination of both. Text heavy presentations are generally good if you are giving a lecture to a group within your institution and want them to take notes. Image heavy presentations can help to make your presentation more conversational in style since there are only visual cues. Combining the two approaches 
gives listeners the benefit of both visual aid and notes. Technology-rich learning environments offer the potential to take teaching and learning beyond the four walls of the classroom, where learning can be based on real-world problems and learners become active participants in constructing their own learning. When the learner is encouraged to present using Microsoft PowerPoint, many benefits are derived. Personalized learning. Personalized, relevant, and contextualized learning is created based on the learner's own passions, strengths, needs, family, culture, and community. In creating this opportunity, special needs will be more quickly diagnosed, learning gaps will be addressed, and progress will be accelerated. Expanded learning opportunities. Because of its functionality, learning happens at many times and in many places, and it provides learners with authentic, rich, and diverse learning opportunities. High engagement learning. High agency learning recognizes learners as active particip participants in their own learning and engages them in the design of their experiences and the realization of their learning outcomes in ways appropriate for their developmental level. Encouraging student agency will produce better learning outcomes. Competency-based learning. Students show what they know and progress based on demonstrated mastery. PowerPoint used in dynamic grouping, workshops, and project-based learning can add lots of collaborative learning to an individual progress model. Assessment for learning. The new comment button on the review tab powers continuous feedback. When students can track their own progress, it can improve motivation and agency. Collaborative learning. The sharing, commenting, and merging of each other's work make it easy for teams near and far to co-author presentations. Quality learning products. It allows students to produce professional quality products and to share them with public audiences. PowerPoint presentations change the classroom culture from Turnitin to production for public audiences. In order to apply Microsoft PowerPoint most effectively, the presenter must be knowledgeable. Your presentation isn't about your slides alone. It's about the message you want to get across. Think about the narrative that will be discussed, why and in what order. Write it out. Script the entire presentation to give you an idea of how the information presented will flow and how viewers will see it in sequence. Highlight what's most important. A presentation covers the most crucial pieces only. Pick key points and put the rest in an appendix to refer to during question and answer session at the end. Know your audience. Your topic selection, the language you use, the examples you give to illustrate points, and even the little bit of humor included should be tailored specifically with your target audience in mind. Rehearse. You may notice that some things work well while others don't and might need to be worked around. Rewrite after you rehearse. Instead of reworking your delivery, you may need to consider the content and rewrite the areas that served as stumbling blocks. Keep your slides simple. This is one of the most important PowerPoint presentation tips to follow when designing your slides. Keep in mind that less is more effective. Limit words on your slides. 
the audience should be listening, not reading. Use high quality photos and graphics. One of the most important tips for quality PowerPoint presentations is to use high quality photos and graphics. Microsoft PowerPoint is undoubtedly the most popular or most common app used to give presentations. Some may describe PowerPoint as boring, but only a bad carpenter blames the tools. And like any tool, PowerPoint is incredibly useful when used properly. In this instructional video, we will look at the key actions you'll need to take to build a PowerPoint presentation. You'll need to add slides, the individualized pages in the presentation. You'll add content to the slides, such as text boxes, images, charts, and graphs. Change themes and styles to make your presentation look professional and fit the occasion at hand. Prepare presentation aids like speaker notes and presenter view to help you feel comfortable with presenting. It will help to understand the layout of the app. Let us walk through the key menu options because an understanding of the way the app is laid out would likely help you to quickly find any feature you need. This part of the PowerPoint presentation will focus on the interface. The ribbon menu is found across many Microsoft apps, such as Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It is situated above the main area of the application. The ribbon contains a series of tabs that you can switch between. Each of these have a unique set of tools to work with in preparing your presentation. When you switch tabs on the ribbon, you'll see new buttons and options that will aid in modifying your presentation. From the File tab, you can save, share, and export your presentation. The Home tab is a general purpose collection of the most common tools that you will use in PowerPoint. Insert is an all-in-one tool to add every imaginable type of content, such as tables, pictures, charts, videos, and many more. Design controls the overall look and feel of your presentation with themes and style settings. Transitions add animation when you switch slides. Animations control the order and style that objects will enter or exit your slide with. Slideshow controls settings related to the way your presentation appears when sharing it with an audience. Let us take a deeper look into how some of these key tabs work. The Home tab is the default for most users because it has practically every tool needed, from adding a new slide to changing text and paragraph settings. When you are working on adding content to a slide, the Insert tab has every possible tool to add new content to a slide. Choose one of these types of objects to add to the slide. PowerPoint has a variety of views which are simply different ways to work with the same presentation. You can change the view in order to get a different perspective on your content. Use views for a different way to edit and build your PowerPoint presentation. Normal view is the default presentation view in PowerPoint. There is a difference between the default normal view and slide sort of view. Normal view shows each slide front and center, while slide sort of view creates thumbnails that you can drag and drop to reorder the presentation. An attractive presentation can really grab your audience's attention. We use themes and styles in PowerPoint to add visual appeal to the presentation. And the Design tab 
really controls these settings. On the Design tab, you can click on one of the themes to restyle the presentation or try out a different style thumbnail to overall the color theme. So the actions you will find yourself using repeatedly and how you can do that in PowerPoint. When you open up Power, Microsoft PowerPoint, this is the interface that you will see. In front of you, you are seeing several templates or themes. We have a blank presentation and then we have a number of different themes present. So I will look through the themes, but if I am not pleased or not impressed by what I'm seeing here, I can do a search. So I am going to search, I'm going to type in education. And I will see on the extreme right, a number of different categories, education being to the top, and I'm seeing 236. There are 236 themes. So I'm going to quickly go through these and see what I would like to select. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to click create. Good. Now those are templates. So what will happen is that we'll have slides with a little bit of information or templates of what we can add to those slides. Now, I'm going to now add my content. So, I'm going to do the alphabet. And because I'm dealing with little children, I'm not going to do the entire alphabet. I'm going to do the first four letters. So I'm going to bring this down a bit, left click, drag it down. I want my alphabet to be a little larger, so I'm going to increase the font size, or I can change my font, and uh, I'm going to drag it across a little bit, and drag them across a little bit. So that's my cover slide. I move to my next slide. I don't want this information here, so... I am going to delete it. Good. And now I'm going to insert text. So I click on the insert tab. I click on my text box. I want my font size. I'm going to keep the same font, but I'm going to change my font size. I'm going to change my font size to 250. And I am going to start with capital A, common A. All right. I'm going to bring this around a little bit. And now I want to insert a picture. So there's a number of things we can insert, but I want to insert a picture. So I am going to insert an apple. Insert. Good. I'm going to resize my apple. But I don't want this white background on blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my background. So I come across here on the format and I'm going to remove my background. And the purple part is the part that we're going to remove. I click outside and now I have just my plain old apple. I'm going to my second slide. And the same thing again, so I have to delete this. But I don't want to have to go through delete and delete. And so what I'm going to do is come between here and I'm going to insert a new slide. Good. When I insert a new slide, now I just clicked on this. But if I clicked on the arrow, I would see all my different options. So I'm just going to click on the blank one, my new slide. I get a blank slide. These are all my options and my possible layouts. So I want a blank slide. So I'm here. Again, I just need to clean this off because I'm not interested in this. Right. And I am going to do the same thing. I am going to insert a text box. And I want my font size to be 250. And I have capital D, common D. I am going to bring this wrong a little bit. Oops. 
dragged around and I'm going to insert a picture of a dog. Good. Bring him around. And in keeping with what I've done before, I'm going to get rid of this background. So I'm going to remove the background. Click on the outside. There I have my dog. Put him on my grass. Let's crop this a little bit. And I'm going to make my dog a little bigger. Right, so I have my dog. Let's go to my next slide. I don't want that again, so I'm going to insert a new slide. I have to insert my text box. I forgot these. Let me get rid of this. Delete. 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 So let's insert my text box. Change my font size. 250. I have my capital C, common C. I'm going to insert a picture of a cat. This is my cat. I want to bring this C down a little bit. Right and good. I'm going to increase the size of this cat. Good. I am going to remove format. I'm going to remove my background. But this inner box is cutting my card. This is right. So now I am going to clean this up a bit because look what happened. The pores is going to be erased. So I'm going to mark this as an area I want to keep. Clean up that pore. Clean up that pore. But there are some areas here that I do not want. So I'm going to mark them as areas to remove. That's part of the sheet. That's part of the sheet behind there as well. Good. I in between. See what happened there? Right. Good. There's a little piece there. Beautiful. Nope. Um... Let's remove this. Let's keep part of him there. Good. So now I click on the outside. This is my cut. I wonder. Let's see if I rotate my cut. It looks a bit funny. So I will leave him like that. Okay. So this is my cut. Right. Then I go. I include a new slide I didn't need to go up there I just right click in between there and I got my new slide I am going to remove now if you're wondering what these are I, this is I can insert table instead of going up here into insert where we have the table the charts etc it's already built in insert charts smart art etc but I'm not interested in those so I'm going to delete and I'm going to again insert my text box. I have one more letter to do. 250 is my font size. I have capital B, common B. I'm going to insert a picture of a bat. So that's my bat. Let's move him around. Let's increase his size. Bring him down. Increase the size a little more. Again, I'm going to remove my background, but look what happens there. So some of my bath is going to be erased. I want to keep that area. So let's let's draw our line. I want to keep that area. This is our bat. Good. I just want to double check something. Yes, I need to expand this a bit as part of my bat. But cut off. I am keeping this area here. Fill in a little bit of this. Good. And some here. Good. All right. And now I click on the outside. So that's my bat. Beautiful. So let's see. 
I would also like to insert some audio. So I go and I am going to on my bat. I'm going to go backward this time. So I'm inserting this. Insert. Good. I do not want this icon to show during the playing of the PowerPoint. So I'm going to hide it. And I want it to play automatically. I'm going backwards. I'm going to insert again audio from my computer. And it's a cut. So this is my audio. Again, I'm going to hide him during the show. And I want him to play automatically. Next slide is my dog. I'm going to insert the audio of a dog. Insert it, hide it during the show, let it play automatically. Same steps I'm repeating over and over again. Next slide is going to insert what song does an apple make? So, an apple doesn't make a song, but someone biting the apple causes a song. I'm going to hide it during the show. And I'm going to play it automatically. But how can I have an apple sounding as if it's been bitten and it remains whole? So what I'm going to do is I am going to insert another picture. I'm going to insert a picture of a bitten apple. Let's insert that. I'm going to crop this picture a little bit. And I'm going to increase the size of this so that it's about the same size of the other apple. Now, I'm going to... What happened there? So let's move this. Let's get rid of that. Let's move this because it's including everything. Let's remove the background. Oh, that's the crop area. Let's increase this area here so that... It includes my whole apple and I delete. Beautiful. Now let's ensure that the both are the same size. So I need to pull them down a little bit. Go across. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this apple a little more. Now they look the same size. Now I'm going to shift him around a little bit and I want this apple to disappear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate it. I'm going to animate. I'm going to show my animation pane so you can see what's happening. I'm going to animate this apple so that it disappears after, let's see, 1.5 seconds. Good. Right. But... I want this to happen with the previous after 1.5 seconds. Good. Now, my bitten apple, put him in place. I want him to appear with the previous. So when one disappears, the other appears. So there are slides that we do not need. So I am going to delete these slides. I'm going to click on it and press delete. But I'm not going to go through that for every single slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these slides. Press control. And delete. I want to add one more slide. I'm going to add a special slide. I'm going to insert, sorry, home, and I'm going to add a new slide. I'm not going to click up here because I'm going to get a plain slide. I want that special slide that I saw, this one. I want that slide at the end, and I am going to put by dinner. And I am 
going to undo the capitalization so that's my last slide so let's look at this now i have my cover slide i have a d c b there's an error so what i need to do is i am going to go into view and right now i have the normal view each slide is being presented to me i'm going to go into slide sorter where i can see all my slides at once and i can now drag each slide into the correct position so b should come after a and c should become for d now i have my cover slide a b c d and my last slide i'm going back to my normal view now let's see now what this would look like when we present so i'm going into my slideshow and i'm going to present from the beginning and what is going to happen is I'm going to have to click to change the slides. I will click with my mouse or I can use my right arrow to move forward, my left arrow to move back or my up arrow to move forward, my down arrow to move back or I can click, simply click the space bar. Normally, I would add a transition so it will transition automatically. But for today, we are going to use our mouse. So we're going to start from the beginning. So with, with just these three steps, choosing a theme and style, adding content, adding a new slide, we have the repeatable sequence needed to build a simple presentation. The content and design will vary greatly from one presentation to the next, however, no matter what the goal of your presentation is, these are common steps and there are common tools that every presenter can benefit from using. Let us focus on the most valuable tools for speakers in this PowerPoint tutorial. I mentioned these tools as a way to build confidence and comfort for presenters. First such tool is the speaker notes. Forget writing out note cards and keeping a printed outline nearby. Speaker notes are a way to add the things you need to say to each slide. Speaker notes are added to each individual slide and the best way to add them is from the normal view, this view here. Click on notes below the presentation area right here and type your slide specific notes so we see here click to add notes i can also increase that area so let's go to my first slide and i'm going to type in we are going to learn the first Four letters of the alphabet. Right. So we are going to learn the first four letters of the alphabet. Speaker notes will show up in the printed copies of your presentation. So it is easier to build them into PowerPoint instead of scribbling note cards that you may lose. Our next important Peter is the presenter view, which is a perfect way to present for two screen setups. While your audience will see the presentation you've built on the projector or the LCD screen, you'll have your own private view with speaker notes 
and upcoming slides and more. You turn on presenter view from the slideshow tab. So we are seeing right now I'm in my slideshow tab and there's a little box here that I can click that it's ticked already use presenter view. Now I do not have two laptops. I only have one device. But if I press Alt F5, I will see my presenter's view. And here I am seeing the screen that is being projected or presented. I'm also seeing my next upcoming slide and I'm seeing my notes. If I click on the next slide, the arrow to the right, same things happen. So I'm actually seeing what is being presented and I am, have my notes available to me that I can read. And our final tool that I would like to share with you is the spell and grammar check to avoid missing a key typo before you give your presentation. It's a great help to run a spell and grammar check before you give your presentation. To check for common spelling issues, jump to the review tab and click spelling. PowerPoint will check for the most common issue and allow you to correct them as needed. So here I have capital D, common D. It's thinking that I probably want to put did or dad. I am simply going to Ignore. Thank you for watching. I hope you find my presentation both informative and enjoyable.